Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a little girl's jumper dress. You may have a little girl or have a granddaughter and these are a really fun way to use up some of the cute quilting fabrics we have that maybe are a little wilder or a little flowery. This would be a really cute jumper dress. This K facet print, just awesome, love it. If you want something a little more subdued, Amy Butler has a lot of really pretty prints. So today we're going to use this print. So I'm gonna show you how to make the whole dress there really, really quick and fun. There was a time when we made a lot of little girls jumper dresses. We used to sell them and we would put really cute ceramic buttons on them. It's a very simple pattern. It's a lined top with a ruffled skirt. So here are my patterns that I've been using for years and years and years, and you can see how old and folded up looking they are. So we're gonna recopy these, and we'll have them available as a free download in sizes one through six. Now these sizes are done kind of by age because we found when we sold the dresses that most people knew how old the little girl was they were buying for, but they did not often know what size she wore. So these are pretty much done by size. So this is for the four-year-old. Now, if you have a really big four-year-old, you might go up to the six, and if they're really petite, go down to the three. So the only pieces we need, we need the back, which is gonna go on the fold. We've got the fold here. And then we need the front, and this is gonna be separate pieces. And we need to cut both of these twice because the top is gonna to be fully lined. The only other piece we need is the skirt here, and I'm using two complete 45 inch widths of fabric, and that'll make a nice full skirt. So I'm gonna pin these pieces on, and then we'll cut them out. I already have my fabrics all prepared here, and I made a straight cut with my rotary cutter because this is a straight line here, and this is going to be pinned on the fold. This is the back. So I'm just gonna stick a couple of pins in here. And then I'm going to cut around this piece. Now the front piece of the pattern, it can just be pinned right here. Again, we can use that straight line, stick a couple of pins in, and then we're just gonna take our scissors and cut around the pattern, and then we'll be ready to sew. Now, I'm used to cutting clothing patterns out with scissors. You might be able to do this with your rotary cutter. I haven't tried, I'm just so used to doing it this way that that's just what I'm gonna do. Now the straight cuts, of course, I could get my rotary cutter out. They're actually easier that way. The pieces are cut out now. This is the back yoke here. Here's the back. And then this is going to be the front. We've got two fronts here. And we're gonna sew it together at the shoulders and we're gonna sew it together under the arms on the sides. And then we're gonna make the same thing again to line the whole thing with. So the only other thing we need for this is the skirt pieces. And all I have to do now, I've cut it to the length. All I have to do now is cut off these selvages here. Then we'll take it over to the serger and get started. The skirt length for this particular size is 21 inches long. You can vary that size if you like, and we will have the numbers for all the different lengths of skirts on the download. Today we're going to be working on a serger. So this is a little sewing machine. This is a home sewing machine that does a serging stitch. It's kind of an overcasting stitch and it's got a blade on it. So it will cut and overcast the fabric all in one motion. And this is used for sewing construction and it keeps things from fraying out. I'm gonna sew the skirt sections together. So this is just a really long seam and I'll show you how cool the machine is. So as it's sewing, it's got a blade right here that's trimming off the fabric and it's making this really neat overcasting stitch so that we won't have any fraying. So 
this makes a really nice stitch and it keeps everything from fraying. On the downside, you don't want to stitch it incorrectly because you have a lot of snipping out to get all that stitching taken apart. And also, you don't want to have to re-thread very often because you've got four spools of thread and with all these fancy ways of threading it there. So when I change threads, I tie the new color onto here and then I just stitch until the thread comes all the way through to the needle and then I will just have to re-thread the needle. But they're really, really fun and they're really great for clothing construction. So now we are going to, we're just going to open this up and we're going to just stitch around the hem. I'm not folding it at all. I'm just going to make a stitch along the edge so that we won't fray. So you can either lift your presser foot and feed it under there or you can just curve onto it. Now when we fold our hem back, we'll have a nice place that won't fray. So the skirt is now in a big tube and we are going to hem this bottom edge and then we're gonna gather the top edge. So right now we're going to iron the hem in place. So I'm going to just be folding up an inch and I'm just gonna eye it up. You can use a measuring stick or a uh, ruler if you want there. And I just like to iron this so that it's really easy to sew it nicely. I'm also gonna iron my seams and iron the whole skirt so it lays nicely. Now I do wanna iron this seam nice and flat. And we'll find the other seam and do the same thing. And I'm not going to iron these folds completely out right now because I'm going to use them for marking where the center of the front and back of the skirt are. So I will give those a nice ironing when the dress is done. So I'm going to leave the rest of this. It's not perfectly flat here and I'm going to leave the folds that came when we had it on the bolt. I'm going to leave these folds in because that tells me exactly halfway between the seams. And so this will be divided up into quarters and then we can gather the skirt into quarters with a quarter on each quadrant of your body. I've got the bodice or the top of the dress pinned here at the two shoulders, right sides together. So that's the back. And this is the front, it's right sides together. So I'm just going to sew the shoulder seams and I'm gonna do the same thing on the lining, which is exactly the same pieces. Now we are going to open these up so they're just sewn together at the shoulders. It looks kind of funny. And we're gonna put the lining right on top of it. So the pieces are cut at the same time. They all fit exact. So we're just going to line everything up exact. I'm going to pin around the armhole here and all the way around here. And then we're going to pin around the neckline. And then we're going to pin the other armhole. So I've matched the shoulder, she the shoulder seams there. We might put a pin right in the middle here. And I'm going to take all these pins out before I stitch. And then we've got the other armhole here. So we'll just get everything lined up. And it sews really easily because they were cut at the same time and they're all exact. So what we're going to do now is we are going to stitch around each armhole and then we're going to stitch 
up the front of the center of the top, around the neckline, and then down the front there. So that could all be done all continuously. So let's do the armholes first. My pattern includes about a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is what my machine is using right now. We're not gonna need to clip this seam or anything because it'll curve real easily and it'll flip very nicely because it's a small seam allowance. So just sew right off the end. Now we're going to do the other arm. You do want to pull any pins out before you get to them because that blade will not like it if it hits a pin. Now I'm going right up the front of the middle of the top here. And just stitch right off, take it off the machine, and now we'll go around the neck. Here's the whole top of the dress. So here's the back, and here is the front. So after you've got it stitched, it'll lay really, really flat on here. And I usually give it a little pressing just to make sure that anything that we stretched going around when we were stitching gets put back in place. Now here is one of the most fun parts. We are going to turn this right side out. So we don't have the arm, we don't have the side seam stitched yet. We're leaving that open and we are going to pull the front through here. So we're going to reach in here and we're just going to start poking through this skinny strap part that goes over the shoulder and it gets easier as you pull a little more and a little more and a little more. So the whole front is going to be coming through here. So just pull a little bit, open it up, pull a little more, and like I said, it goes faster the farther you go. So this whole front, one side of the front, is now pulled through. So there it's starting to look like the front again. And this is going to go all the way around to the back. Now we will do the same thing with the other side. So we'll pull it through and get it all flattened out. So here's what it looks like after it's been flipped right side out. It's still kind of lumpy bumpy looking, but if you just kind of hand press these pieces, so that that seam is right in the middle. And it helps if you stretch it a little along the curve. That will help that seam go right in the middle. Sometimes right in the shoulders, you have to wiggle it around a little to get it flipped correctly. And again, this is gonna come right down there. So just get everything back in place, give it a little tug, and then use your hands at first, and then get your iron and steam press it back into place. So we're going to do this all the way around and get everything laying nice and flat. This is what it should look like after you've got it all ironed nice and flat. It's all really, really flat. And once you have the one side ironed, flip it over and iron from the other side. Now I used the same fabric for the lining. You can use a contrasting color or a solid if you like for the lining. Now you can see that's what the top's going to look like. We're going to have a little overlap there where we're going to button it. Now it's starting to look a little more like a dress. We're going to switch machines now. We need a straight stitch machine. I'm going to my trusty console here, but we just need a single needle. We don't need the overcast stitch for all of the dress construction. The front of the dress overlaps about an inch. If you line up all of the sides, that's how much overlap there's going to be. So I'm going to pin that on the bottom, just the, just the front of it. I'm going to pin that in place. And I'm going to pin it up here, just so it will stay nice and neat. And I find it useful 
to actually stitch right along here just so that it doesn't come apart it stays right where we want it so just a basting stitch but that's better than a pin now the next step is to stitch these side seams so you can open this one up and open this one up and you can sew one long seam here and I think it's a little bit easier to do on my single needle here because it's not a curved seam so there's no reason we have to have the um, overcast stitch now this will just get put right back in place here we're going to just re-iron it I'm going to make my seams nice and flat So the top is pretty much done except for the buttons. Now we're going to work on the skirt. Now I'm going to stitch the hem. It's already ironed nice and flat, so I'm just going to use the, the lines on the machine here and stitch all the way around. It goes really, really fast since it's already ironed nice and neat. Now we need to gather the top of the skirt. The easiest way to do this is if you have a a shearing foot or a ruffling foot and each machine each model has a different foot and they're called different names but it makes the ruffle really really fast so even if you're only making one dress I would recommend getting the foot I use it when I make ruffles for pillows so I'm going to use a really long stitch length and I'm not going to turn the tension up very much just a little and I'm going to sew with about a quarter inch seam allowance here and I'm going to prevent the fabric from coming out from behind the machine here. Look what a nice ruffle that makes and it goes really fast. So I'm just sewing right along the edge but I'm kind of holding the fabric behind as it comes out from under the foot. This makes the ruffle nice and full when I hold that fabric there. And the skirt is pretty full. There's a lot of fabric to get in to fit it to the bodice. So I'm just going to go all the way around. When you come to the end, just stitch a little, little bit over what you've already gathered. And you need to leave this thread long here. Don't trim it short because the ruffles will pull out. So leave a long tail of thread here. Okay, that looks like it's about the right length that will fit around our bodice, but we're gonna divide it in quarters. That's why we left these um, folds showing here. So I'm gonna put a pin in four spots, one pin at each side seam, and one pin at each fold. And those folds will go in the front and the back and the seams will go on each side. You can see that the skirt is ruffled to almost exactly the same size as the bodice, which is good. Now I'm going to do two extra steps here that you could do or could not do. So right now these pieces are just loose. What you could do is just stitch all the way around to anchor them together so that nothing will move when we sew the skirt to the bodice. I don't always do this step. I'm just making a very, very narrow stitch here. I'm really close to the edge, just to keep everything in place. The other thing that we could do is we're gonna sew the bodice to the skirt. I normally do it right on the serger. But I think today I will show you how to do that first on this machine. And once we have the bodice stitched on there, then we'll move to the serger and then we'll serge all those raw edges out of the way. Now we're going to pin the skirt to the bodice. So I'm just gonna put the skirt inside the bodice here. So I'm putting them actually right sides together. And this pin here is right in the middle. So we're gonna put it right in the middle there 
and we're going to repin it. Then we're going to find this pin that's in the middle of the back, this one right here, and we're going to find the middle of the back. So I'm just going to fold it. That's the middle right there. So I'm going to put the pin right there and I'm going to pin the skirt to the bodice. Then we're going to do the same thing on the sides. We're going to find that side seam where we put a pin and that goes right on the side seam. This way, the fullness of the skirt will be evenly distributed all the way around. So we've got the skirt laying against the inside of the bodice. So we're just going to stitch a little bit lower than that gathering stitch there so that the threads don't show. So we're just going to stitch all the way around. We're using about a 3 8 inch seam. So I'm going to kind of smooth these gathers out a little bit and make sure the edges are even and I'm just going to stitch. Be sure to take those pins out before you get to them. So here's where I started stitching. I've gone all the way around. And we can actually see what the dress looks like right now even before we put this back on the serger because it's always fun to look at that. So if we just pull this over, it's almost done. So we're going to turn this back like this and then I'm going to use the serger and that will get all that ickiness all overcast and it'll look a lot better. So we're just going to be restitching what we've already sewn but it's going to cover up all of the raw edges there. So it's cutting off a slight little bit. You can see that part's being cut off right there. And then it's making the stitch really nice and neat. Okay, we're all the way around. And look at how, look at how nice and neat that looks. And that will hold up with washing and look really, really nice. So now we will just trim the threads. Find a cute little girl, put some buttons on it, and we're done. We have the whole dress done, and we have a really cute little girl. We tried it on here, so you can see how fun this is. It's long, it's loose, it looks really good with a little t-shirt underneath. And um, you wanna give us the spin? You wanna spin around, show us the back? There you go. So it's pretty pretty full here. And we carry lots of fun prints. All your local quilt stores are going to carry a ton of really fun prints that look really cute in a dress. So here's one that's a little more sedate for a little bit taller of a little girl. So we will have the pattern online so you can print it off and you can cut your own little dress. So have lots of fun and thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make a little girl's jumper dress.